thank you for having me here. This is a pretty cool opportunity to get to come speak to you in London. Uh, like Todd mentioned, I've been flying around the globe. I just got in from Singapore this morning, so I'm a little bit jet lagged right now, so if I fall over in the middle of the presentation, you'll know why. I'm being tired. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here to speak with you on Heroku and Heroku Connect. Uh, it's something that I've become more interested in in the past couple of years, um, getting more into architecture and integration. Well, I've been in, into integration for years, but into other ways that we can um, deal with data and integration uh, pertaining to Salesforce in particular. So I'm actually from Boston, Mass, and I was here for the world tour, and I loved it, and I loved the city, and Todd said, well, why don't you come back and speak at our developer group. So I said, sure, why not? I'll do it on the way home from Singapore. <laughs> uh, I have my own Salesforce consulting company, Lizard Tech Consulting. Um, we focus on architecture and development. Um, and I've been building that company for the past few years. So that's why I was in Singapore. So to get started, what is Heroku? Heroku is a cloud platform as a service that lets companies build, deliver, monitor, and scale apps. It's a service that supports several program programming languages, Ruby, Java, PHP, Python, Node.js, Go, Scala, and Clojure. Um, so it's not, it's not like the Salesforce platform where you're tied to one programming, programming, uh, programming language. You can choose what you are more comfortable with and develop your apps in that language. It was one of the first cloud platforms and has been in development since June of 2007 when it supported only the Ruby programming language. Heroku makes the process of deploying, configuring, scaling, tuning, and managing apps as simple and straightforward as possible so that developers can focus on app development. Uh, Heroku focuses relentlessly on apps and the developer experience around apps. So it's the same idea as Salesforce where you don't have to worry about the infrastructure and the on-premise hardware and servers and just uh, focus more on the app application development. Now we'll get more into the Heroku architecture. All Heroku applications run into a collection of lightweight Linux containers called Dynos. Uh, Heroku offers a variety of dyno types to support all apps of all sizes, from hobbyist side projects to high traffic production services. They, there are different dyno types, each with a set of unique properties and performance characteristics. Free, hobby, standard, and performance. Private dynos only run in private spaces and are available in Heroku Enterprise. Every dyno belongs to one of three configurations, web, worker, and one-off. So to scale horizontally, you'll want to add more dynos. To scale vertically, you want to use bigger dynos. All dynos are strongly isolated from one another for security purposes. Heroku uses OS containerization with additional custom hardening to ensure that access is properly restricted for all customers. So Heroku also has what is called Heroku Postgres. It's a managed SQL database as a service for all developers. Tons of developer tools like database followers, forking, data clips, and automated health checks. Heroku provides seamless Heroku Postgres and Salesforce data synchronization. Uh, it allows developers to combine the capabilities of the Lightning platform and Heroku. Uh, so what this means is Heroku becomes an option for migrating large amounts of data from an external system that needs to be accessed by Salesforce. So when you're looking at an overall um, architecture, if you're trying to um, move some data from an old system that's going to be retired and you don't want to bring all that data into Salesforce, but you want to be able to access that data within Salesforce, maybe for reporting or um, just, just for an access within apps, you can bring that data into Heroku and you can share that data with your Salesforce apps. And you can also write apps on Heroku um, that will access Salesforce data as well. Uh, the Heroku DX is uh, what they call, it's a, a set of tools for the Heroku developer experience. Um, data clips let you easily share the results of SQL queries on a Heroku Postgres database. Um, Heroku dashboard and metrics. Dashboard is where you manage all of your apps and organizations, scale your deployments up or down, and manage databases and add-ons. 
Heroku Metrics, a feature within dashboard available to paid apps, gives you powerful insights on the runtime characteristics of your applications, allowing you to seamlessly monitor and fine tune performance within your regular workflow. And Heroku Button makes the experience of cloning code and deploying an app as easy as a single click. And that's one thing I like about Heroku, it's a lot of just, you click a button here and there and you're, um, you're deploying code from GitHub into Heroku and you're connecting Salesforce and Heroku and it's, there's not all this complicated config that has to go on. It's very simple and easy to use to get apps up and running. So you can get an app up and running pretty quickly uh, on the platform. And then there's Postgres DBX, uh, which is a set of new features added to the Postgres service. It gives developers a clear and easy to use window into their database usage, providing the visibility needed for management and optimization. And then there's Heroku Flow, which brings together Heroku pipelines, review apps, Heroku CI, and GitHub integrations into an easy to use structured workflow for continuous delivery. And then uh, GitHub integration. Um, Heroku integrates with GitHub to make it easy to deploy code living on GitHub to apps running on Heroku, like I mentioned. And I have a sample app that um, I created just by clicking a button to say from GitHub deploy to Heroku and my app was there. When GitHub integration is configured for Heroku app, Heroku can automatically build and release if the build is successful, pushes to the specified GitHub repo. So the other thing that I wanted to speak about was integrating Heroku with Salesforce because there's a lot of power behind this. Like I mentioned, you can pull data in from an external system and uh, have it living in Heroku for access uh, within Salesforce. And this is what we call Heroku Connect, uh, the Salesforce sync. Heroku Connect is an add-on that provides a data synchronization service between Salesforce and Heroku Postgres databases. Heroku Connect makes it easy for you to build Heroku apps that share data with your Salesforce deployment. Using bi-directional synchronization between Salesforce and Heroku Postgres, Heroku Connect unifies the data in your Postgres database with the contacts, accounts, and other custom objects in the Salesforce database. It's easily configured with a point and click UI, it's simple to get the service up and running in minutes, and no coding or complex configuration is required. You can build apps that span Heroku and Salesforce. With Salesforce data in Heroku Postgres, you can easily combine the capabilities of the Lightning platform and Heroku. So you get the best of both worlds. Apps built using standard open source stacks like Rails, Node.js, and Python connect natively to Postgres and via Heroku Connect directly back to Salesforce. So as you can see, this gives you a lot more options and a lot more power when developing on the Salesforce platform. Creating apps that extend your data and processes directly to your customers is now as simple as writing SQL. Heroku Connect provides an API to automate the creation, maintenance, and monitoring of sync operations between Salesforce and a Heroku Postgres SQL database. There are three plans for Heroku Connect, Demo, Enterprise, and Shield. Demo is the default plan when provisioning the add-on and provides access to all features of Heroku Connect with the following limitations. Sorry, I, that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> Enterprise is the paid plan that you'll use after purchasing Heroku Connect. If you have existing add-ons using the demo plan, you can upgrade them. Shield is the paid plan that you use after purchasing Heroku Shield Connect. Heroku Shield Connect can only synchronize data within Heroku Postgres databases that have Shield plans. Heroku Connect supports the following Heroku Postgres plan type, standard, premium, and private. It is possible to add multiple Heroku Connect add-ons to a single application, such as to synchronize data from multiple Salesforce organizations, which is also uh, pretty cool as well. So if you want to combine data from multiple orgs, you can do that within Heroku. Using a different database schema name for each organization allows a single Heroku Postgres database be used with multiple Heroku Connect add-ons. It is also possible for multiple instances of Heroku Connect to be connected to the same Salesforce organization. This may be desirable to synchronize large numbers of Salesforce objects from a single organization. Heroku Connect automatically chooses the most efficient method to transfer data between your database and Salesforce organization by employing a set of best practices that take into account data change volume, and the many, many subtle details of Salesforce API operation, which that's also pretty cool as well. You don't even have to worry about choosing the most efficient method. Heroku does it for you when it comes to the data synchronization. 
Heroku Connect prim primarily uses the SOAP API for interactions with Salesforce. And then there are Heroku external objects, which are objects that you can use within Salesforce to access your Heroku data. Heroku external objects provides a new architectural option for building engagement apps that create unified customer experiences across business systems. Heroku external objects allow you to make data in Heroku Postgres database available within your Salesforce deployment to create, read, update, and delete. You can build sophisticated apps in Heroku and have your application data exposed in Salesforce business processes while keeping all of the data in, Her in Heroku Postgres. So another uh, example of using this would be maybe um, a company has a, a web-based app that needs to be replaced and Salesforce isn't the right place to build that app. So you can build that app in Heroku and then you can expose that data using Hero Heroku external objects within Salesforce. So you still have access to that data, but you don't have to write that app within Salesforce. Any data in Heroku Postgres can be integrated into Salesforce with a simple point and click configuration. Used with Salesforce Connect, Heroku external objects is available as part of Heroku Connect. So when you bring the Heroku external objects into Salesforce, that's called Salesforce Connect. In conclusion, Heroku adds a lot of power and flexibility to Salesforce deployments. Hopefully you will see some ways that Heroku might help you in your current Salesforce deployment. And you can go sign up for a free Heroku developer account um, at signup.heroku.com. And with that, I will show you a quick little demo of something I set up earlier. It actually came from Trailhead. Uh, very simple. Um, exercise to share data between Heroku and Salesforce. So I have the Dreamhouse app installed in Salesforce, as you can see here. And I can do something as simple as update uh, the price of one of these listings. So I'll change this to 850,000. Actually, I'll first show you the property over here as well. This is that property listed uh, in the Heroku app. And you can see that the price is 800,000. So the waterfront in the city. So I'm gonna change that to 850 and save it. And then I'm gonna refresh my Heroku app. If it ever refreshes. And you can see now that the price is 850. So it's as simple as just setting up that uh, connection between Heroku and Salesforce and you can share data between the two systems. And this is actually the trailhead that I used in order to do this and it doesn't take very long. So if you're interested in trying this out for yourself, go to trailhead and start learning and connecting your Heroku and Salesforce. And that's it, thank you. This is built on Heroku. Um, so one of the things I discovered yesterday, hot off the press, um, was that back in summer 15 release, I believe that they made a change so that Heroku Connect connections to Salesforce don't contribute to your API limits. Um, for the Salesforce folks in the room, is this still applicable? Or has, has that been pulled? Or OK, cool. So that's a good point to consider then, is that if you're doing integrations any other way, they may contribute to your API limits. If you're using Heroku Connect, they don't count to your API limits, which is a real selling point. <laughs> oh yeah, you do pay for Heroku Connect, and, and, and <laughs> pricing is a little vague. It's one of those classic speak to your account exec things. Um, but yeah, pros and cons, you know, it's, it's definitely in the mix there. I, I, do I look like I do sport? <laughs> in. <laughs> so when Heroku came out, it was very transformational in what it did. Uh, people were struggling with AWS and how many servers do I need? Now that things like clustering technologies got better, EKS, Kubernetes, Docker, why would you still choose Heroku other than for the API limits call? 
Um, because Heroku takes care of all the deployment and uh, the, the whole, it takes care of the whole process of deploying an app. Uh, so you don't have to worry about doing any of that stuff. Like uh, AWS, there's a still a lot you have to worry about when deploying an app on AWS. Heroku actually runs on AWS in the background. So it creates a layer, it creates a platform, kind of like what Salesforce does, where there's just so much that you don't have to worry about. So um, it's just much easier to deploy an app with Heroku and uh, and it can scale as well. So I mean, you can do all that with things like AWS Fargate and the Docker images gives you that same. I've got to admit, it's more technical to build one of those and reuse it and adapt yeah. it. But yeah. But okay. I've been t what I've been told is it's less complex, easier to set up. Okay. That's and easier to also with uh, uh, CI/CD integration. So, here again, and I've got a few questions to, to simply because I'm, I'm studying for the Heroku cert. If you're not aware, there's a Heroku cert. There's a yeah. Heroku cert. That's, I'm going to be doing yeah. that as well. So, um, one of the questions I had, you, you talked about uh, Heroku's ability to scale both horizontally and vertically, scale out versus scale up. Yeah. When would you do one versus the other? Um, I would say you want to scale up when um, you have, I'm trying to think, I'm not really sure. Hmm. So I went over this, I actually was in a, um, a sale with Salesforce for Heroku and I'm trying to remember how we presented that. Um, I'm not really sure, I'm trying to think. I, that's fine, I mean, if, if, if there's anyone else that's, that, yeah. that knows this because they've worked with Heroku, yeah. Right. I'm not. So I think you want to scale out when you have more users hitting your app, um, and then scale up when you need more resources for your app. Well, uh, the idea is that you scale up when you have, when each of your operations takes a large amount of resources. So let's say you have something that calculates a whole lot of statistics, uh, but it just happens the one time, then you need to scale vertically. Uh, you need a better dyno uh, for that. But if you have lots of small operations, let's say you're running a mobile app, each user, you've got a million users, each connecting, but each of them just makes one tiny operation that doesn't take long, then you can scale uh, horizontally. So you have lots of dynos taking care of lots of people. Each one doesn't have to be super strong. So I got it right. You just explained it in much better detail. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else want to talk to the queue? It's a cube. You've got to talk to it. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I was wondering, in, what is, would you say is the, the, the point that you would switch from, say, something like communities to building an app on Heroku? Is there a kind of a, a point in the sand where you go, do you know, we're just not going to bother with that. We'll, we'll move off platform. Um, I, yeah, actually, I went through this with a client. So the selling point for them to go from communities to Heroku is communities, you do not own the app. Heroku, you own the app. So if you want to build something that is yours, that's, that you own, um, and that's not owned by Salesforce and the Salesforce platform, move over to Heroku. And also it just, it gives you more flexibility as well. So if you start to get into something that's a little bit too complex, business logic and the, the way you have to do your development is a little too complex for communities, because communities does have its limitations, then you move over to a full-blown Heroku app. Okay, so it's the kind of thing when you, 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 you just kind of know you've hit the limit or you're kind of planning ahead and you think this is just going to be too complicated? Yeah. Oh, Peter's yeah, got I something to say. <laughs> so uh, the other thing that I would say, and this has come up in, that I've heard of in, in specific customer implementations, is around elas elastic scalability. So communities, you, you buy your licenses and you buy them in advance. Um, however, with Heroku, <coughs> uh, you basically scale or down, upscale or downscale according to the demand. Yeah. Uh, and there was actually a really early uh, use case with a customer here in the UK where they sent out a, there was a Sunday morning um, advertisement of some sort and basically you go and contact the website and you put in your response code. And so six days a week, uh, there was nothing for this website to do. Uh, and one day a week, there were millions of transactions. And so that sort of architecture doesn't suit communities well at all. 
However, with Heroku, you just sort of dial it down and it goes quiet for six days. And then on that seventh day, you know uh, that the storm is coming and you scale up so it's ready to go. Yep, the biggest thing is scalability with Heroku, definitely. Anyone else? Right. Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.